What's up guys, I'm Nomadic. Today we are at the last week of the coffee month series. This whole month was just coffee theme. Everything we made was under the, the idea of, of it being coffee. So today's video is kind of gonna piggyback off of last week's video where me and my buddy, Mar, we just made a video uh, right from scratch where I recorded him in my room and we made a song uh, for our record called Class Clown. Uh, check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. It's a pretty cool video. And in that video, what I did was I managed to record him in my room, which was not a studio, a professional studio or anything like that. Managed to record him in my room. We got a good recording and we got a good sound. So for today's video, I kind of wanted to give a little bit more details about how you can record vocals yourself when you don't have access to a really fancy professional studio, which is kind of the situation for most people. It's two parts. There's the mixing, which goes on in the computer, and then there's the recording, which goes on before you do any of the work and stuff like that inside the DAW. And obviously the recording is the first part of the whole chain. So if you don't record the vocals right, and you, you get it in and they don't sound really that clean, your entire process is not gonna turn out very good. The engineer is gonna be upset. You're gonna try and fix it. And you're gonna have a really hard time doing it. So in terms of microphones, there's a couple of options that you have. There's a couple microphones out there. There's dynamic mics, which are kind of like the typical uh, battle rap microphone or performance mic. There is shotgun microphones, which you can use for cameras, recording video and stuff like that. And there's condenser mics, which is the only mic I've ever used to record vocals in the studio. And that's what I recommend you use because condenser mics are kind of uh, more or less a studio mic. And condenser mics are able to pick up more detail than these other microphones. So get a condenser mic. It's the first thing you want to do. So this is the mic that I have. There's nothing, really nothing special here. I just have the Audio-Technica AT2020. It's a really cheap mic, it's not expensive. I think I remember picking this up off Craigslist for $60, really was not expensive at all. And this mic, a lot of people have. Would I say it's the best mic? I don't think it's the best mic, but again, best is very subjective. I think it is completely false to think that you need to spend a lot of money on a mic to get a good sound. Because if you have a really expensive mic, but you're not recording it in the right room and you don't know how to engineer it, you just wasted like $2,000 on a mic that you didn't need. You can still get a good sound out of a less expensive microphone. What matters more than anything is the character of the mic. This mic has more of a kind of like a heavy quality to it. So if you're rapping or you're kind of trying to get a voice to sound a little bit heavier and a little bit thicker, for rap, in my opinion, I think this is a good mic to use. It'll give you that tone. Um, if you're trying to sing and have really like nice, smooth singing vocals, I don't think this is the best mic for you. But with that being said, every character of a microphone can be adjusted in the computer. It's just gonna take a lot more time. And if the mic is less expensive, you're probably gonna be able to, you're probably gonna, it's probably gonna pick up more uh, noise and stuff like that. So you're gonna have to put in a little bit more work to clean up the recording and stuff. But nonetheless, this mic is fine. If you're trying to record rap or hip hop, this might not be your first choice, but if you need something to get started, this is a great place to start. You wanna get yourself an XLR cable. Now, you wanna have a sound card that has an XLR input. My sound card is pretty old, but it has an XLR input inside of it. And really all you do is you just connect it so XLR, XLR, you just hook it up. And then you'd connect this to your sound card. Make sure your sound card has 48 volts phantom power. That's super important. The condenser mic needs to have an electric circuit or electric current or something to pick up audio. And I think the reason is because condenser mics, uh, they can pick up more detail than your, your average mic. And I think the reason for that is because of the electricity. So make sure you have 48 volts. Super important to have. Anyway, so this is a shock mount. What does a shock mount do? So basically the reason why you want a shock mount is because sometimes when you're recording, you're gonna have the artist kind of 
move around and kind of bump into the mic. Uh, that's kind of like inevitable. That's going to happen at some point. And when you put the mic inside a shock mount, what it does is it has this elastic. So when you hit it, it kind of just absorbs that shock. And you're not going to be flicking the mic, obviously, but anytime anything hits the mic or kind of like taps it, that sound isn't going to go into the mic as heavy if it wasn't there. So you want to make sure you get a shock mount to protect your sound from any kind of like movement that happens. And then you're going to want a pop filter. So this is a pop filter. It looks like this. Um, it has a screen on the front and it kind of goes like this. And the reason why you want a pop filter is because whenever you have uh, sounds like P's and, and F's, like pff, pff, this picks up uh, the, that burst of air that comes from, from the mouth and it blocks it from getting into the microphone. So it just, it gives you a much better recording and it makes the mixing process a little bit easier when the mic isn't going crazy with the, with the burst of air getting in your recording. So pop filter, uh, shock mount, in terms of the distance, you want to have the pop filter be roughly like if you take your fist and you put it like this, that's roughly how far you want it to be. You want to have a, at least like that, that, that much distance from it. I mean, this is just like a technical thing. You don't have to like completely listen to what I'm saying, but you want to have it like that. Okay, so once you get all that stuff set up, once you get it all up set up on a mic stand, the next thing you want to think about is you want to think about the room. The room you're recording in is important because the room is going to determine how much echo or reflection is going to be picked up by the microphone. There's nothing you can really do about it. Anytime you speak, anytime you hear any noise, the sound is always going to be bouncing off the walls. And depending on the room you're in, it's either going to be less or more. Try and record in a room where you have carpet floor. You want to try and get as much fabric, uh, dampening, uh, furniture, pillows, blankets, clothes, as much as possible to make the sound less echoey. And also too, if you can, some people have ceilings, some people are trying to record in their basement and their ceiling is just like completely open with pipes and stuff. If you could figure out a way to close that just to minimize the reflection, you'll be good. In the video, the way I had it set up, the way I had it set up in my room was I had the microphone facing the corner. Right? The corner of the room is kind of the position you want the artist to be in. And the reason for that is because when you have a microphone like this one, this is a cardioid microphone, a cardioid pattern. From the back of the microphone, it's not going to pick up anything. There's no, it's not going to pick up any sound, but it's going to pick up the most at the front. Right? So the reason why this is important is because you want to make sure that all the sound coming into the microphone from this direction is as pure and and clean as you possibly can get. So what that means is knowing that all your sound that you speak is going to reflect off the walls. You want to make sure that the 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 wall behind the artist you want to have completely soundproofed because if you don't the mic is going to pick up the artist's voice and it's also going to pick up the reflections from the wall behind him too. So in my room the way I had it set up was I had the mic positioned in the corner facing this this the front facing the corner with enough room for him to stand like in front of it with like the adequate distance he needed but behind him on one wall I had my closet with all my clothes and I put a bunch of towels in there too and then on the other corner I had a mattress leaned against the wall and I put a blanket on it so it's like the more fabric the more cloth you can have in the room the more dampening you're going to get and the less reflections the mic is going to pick up and now the last thing, this is pretty simple, but a lot of people don't think about this when they're recording. When you're actually recording in the computer, you want to make sure that your volume is not any louder than negative 6 dB. Negative 6 dB is like the maximum you want to go. Personally, I like to record between negative 18 and negative 12 because I know that's like a really solid signal. It's not going to be too loud. But you want to make sure your signal isn't too heavy because if it goes in too loud and it clips, you're never going to be able to fix it. And you're going to drive your engineer nuts. So just make sure it's really simple, really simple. Just turn the gain either on your sound card 
or in the computer in your DAW, just have the gain set so it's no louder than negative six. Make sure negative six is the absolute maximum that you're recording into the computer. And if you need to, turn everything else down. Turn the beat down, turn down everything else so your recording is not louder than negative six dB. I can't stress that enough. You don't want your sound to clip, you're never gonna be able to fix it, and it's not gonna sound good. I, unless that's the sound you're going for, I don't know. <laughs> but if you're trying to record, don't do that. So the last thing I have, I wanna kinda of just talk about this right here. I have this SE Electronics Reflection Filter. This thing is pretty nice. I mean, I wouldn't say this is like gonna make up for everything else, because everything else I said, like choice of mic, uh, positioning in the room, choosing the right room, not recording super loud, that's more important. This is gonna help you, but the other stuff I said is definitely more important than this. This is pretty nice because what it does is it prevents less echo from getting into the mic. But if you think about it, kind of like what I was saying before, because this is a cardioid mic, it's already not really picking up a lot of sound from the back. So when you put it here like this, it'll make a difference, don't get me wrong, it'll help but it's not gonna make a huge difference. I don't think this is like the end all be all gonna save your recordings. I think everything else you need, you, you, everything else I discussed is like more important than this, but like if you still want a better recording in a bedroom, I do recommend this, it's pretty good. All right, well, that's basically the video. I hope that was helpful. Um, just as a side note, I recently started mixing mastering services up on my site. So if you need help mixing a beat or you're trying to mix a song, hit me up, let me know uh, what you need help with and I can help you out with that. And that's all I have to say. I hope this was helpful for you. That's the end of the coffee theme series. No matter. And I'll see you next week.